Hi, Pierre Luc. Sorry that your first uh, question comes <laughs> from uh, from a Winnipeg reporter. Well, welcome to LA on LA's behalf. Um, when in when in the process did it become something that you kind of wanted to expedite this summer instead of waiting it out? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, there's the one year left before becoming UFA. Uh, but, you know, without a contract, if I had a contract, it, it could have been a different story. But without a contract, there needs to be a new one signed. And uh, we thought that it was a good time to to let the team know that, um, you know, this is this is the route we wanted to go. Obviously, just me wanting it wouldn't have worked. We needed to, to work together. And, um, you know, we it got to this point now where, where obviously I, I get traded here. But um, we wanted to be as clear as possible from the start with, with the Jets and, and, and with the whole, whole organization that this is the, the route we want to take. And um, from that moment on, we, we kind of worked together to get to this point. The you did want to work together and not put the Jets in that spot that want you to get out. Um, and that, that sounds lovely. I wonder if you could touch on that. And but, but the thing is, I ask is, you know, why not Winnipeg? I love the place. You know what I mean? Yeah. Sorry, I uh, the, it cut out when you're answer. Uh, and I'd, I'd I want to answer the question properly. So could you just please uh, re-ask just so I, I get the full the full question? Pardon me. Yeah, I'll try one more time. Hopefully, we're good. Um, in I had heard that you had wanted to work with Winnipeg to help them, which is, you know, a wonderful aspect to this for sure. But the the heart of the question was, you know, what what why why not Winnipeg? Why couldn't Winnipeg be a place that you uh, that you signed and, and stayed for eight years? Yeah, it, it, you know, I, I think throughout the whole process, there's a lot of a lot of questions I had to ask myself and. Um, you know, I, I, it's nothing, I think Winnipeg, I think it's, it's, uh, I saw an opportunity with, with the LA Kings that, that to me was, was like a, a dream come true, um, to be able to play with this, with this organization, to be able to play with this team, um, you know, to get, uh, to get to work and, and play with some players that I, I looked up to when I was a kid. Um, I think it's, it's going to be a really fun experience. And, you know, I, I spent three really great years in Winnipeg. I met unbelievable people, um, played with some some teammates that I'll uh, keep in touch with for the rest of my life. And um, I can't thank anybody enough there from the whole organization to the players, to the fans for, for their support from from day one and year one when when it was more of a struggle. And, um, you know, they, they stayed they stayed and supported me. And I appreciate that uh, yeah, a lot. And, you know, now I'm just I'm really looking forward to this to this new chapter. And like I said, it's it's more I'm I'm looking forward and, and not uh, not necessarily back. Dan Greenspan. Hey, Pierre Luke. Uh, congratulations. Nice to talk to you. Uh, obviously, the Kings have Andre Kopitar and Phil Deneau that have been manning their their top two center spots the last couple of seasons. What did the Kings tell you about where they think you'll fit in? Yeah, well, we we. It's funny. I've talked to, to a lot of the the staff already today, but we we didn't go into too much detail. Um, you know, but the opportunity to play with, with two centers like that is is uh is something I'm really looking forward to. Um, you know, obviously I played six years in the NHL now, but I I still have a lot a lot a lot to learn. And those are two guys that you look at the way they play the game and in every aspect, offensively, defensively, on faceoffs. Um, I think uh, for me in the position I'm in. It's uh, it's really a, an unbelievable opportunity for me to to get to know them um, on and off the ice, to get to work with them, to get to see how they how they 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 practice and you know their details and all that. Um, but you know, for when it comes to to where it all goes, um, I didn't get into those conversations yet with with anybody. Okay, thank you, Eric Stevens. Hey, uh, Pierre Luke. Uh, uh, congratulate, congratulations on the uh, new deal. First of all, can you you can hear me? Okay, right? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, in your mind, you know, an eight year, you know, contract extension. That's a pretty long commitment. Is that something that you always had in mind? And this was kind of out. Uh, and I think you touched in terms of the merits of playing for the game. Also, what about the city of LA 
that with that commitment. Sorry, I, I heard you. I heard your first half. I didn't hear the second half. I'm sorry. <laughs> you made an eight year commitment. Yeah. What What is it about even the city of L.A. in addition to the Kings that made it appealing to want to commit to a team and the city for that long a period? Yeah, well, you know, first, I think my dream is to win a Stanley Cup. Um, and I look at the organization, I look at the players, the the whole roster, the staff and everybody. And, and I see that opportunity. Um, and that's something that, that, you know, really, really excited me from the start. And when we saw that LA could be an option, um, you know, that's something that really got, uh, got my interest. And then from that moment on, obviously we're, we're hockey players. Our job is, is to, to play and to compete on the ice and win hockey games. But, you know, you're also, you also go home. You also, uh, have time away from the rink and in the city of LA every time I've gone um, you know I've been lucky enough to do camps when I was younger in LA and and uh, be on the road and have days off there and you know it's uh it's uh you know it's something that I've always been on, on the east coast I've always had the the winters and I've always had the snow and I've always had but to be able to be in, in the city of LA is something that also that that really excites me and uh, you know eight years is is a long time but um you know, there, there's absolutely no doubt in my mind that uh, this this is a, a great decision. On this is the right decision for for me to make. And a quick follow up: How much growth do you feel like you still have as a player, and how ha how can the Kings help you to get to your absolute peak? Yeah, I think uh, it's it's funny. Sometimes I feel like an old guy. Sometimes I feel like a, like a young guy. And I just turned twenty five. Uh, three days ago, um, you know, I'm hopefully going to play my fifth hundred, my 500th game in the NHL uh, this upcoming season. But I, I have so much to learn still, and, and to be able to learn from from the coaching staff that's there, that's already there, and the players, and um, you know, like I just said, guys like Philip Deneau and and Enzo Kopitar, who was one of my favorite players growing up. Um, and every time we play against him, you're on the bench and and you're looking at how he takes faceoffs, how he where his, what route he takes on breakouts um, and on all those things. And uh, I, I think you can learn multiple ways. You can learn by doing video, by, by just paying attention to it. But I think seeing it every day and, and, uh, and being around those guys and picking their brains and how they see the game and whatnot, I think that's really how, how, uh, how you can learn the most and, and the fastest. And I think that's also one thing that, that really excites me about this, this next chapter. Joe Reedy. Hi, Pierre, Luke. Um, you got off to a great start before the All-Star break last year and then kind of tailed off a little bit after the All-Star game. Just were teams playing you different or just what did, what did you kind of learn towards the end of last year that you might be able to apply to the upcoming year? Yeah, it's a, it's a long season. Um, you know, I think consistency, I think consistency as, as a young guy in the NHL might be the hardest thing to – to do um, to be consistent on 82 games, you know, you know, you're not going to feel great for the 82 games. Those games you're going to be tired. Um, you might play injured at times, but I think uh, I think I, I I got closer and closer to that. Um, you know, I learned a lot throughout last year and, and my my three years in Winnipeg. Um, but uh, yeah, this uh, I think it's every year, every game, um, every couple months. You know, you have games you play 12 games or months you have 12 games, months you have 16. The, everything goes into that, uh, how you take care of your body, how you prepare in the summer. And um, I'm, uh, I'm really excited to, to apply that to, to, uh, to the LA Kings. And then just thoughts about being in the Pacific division with reigning Stanley cup champs and uh, Edmonton who Kings have faced the last couple of years in the first round. Yeah, it's a, it's a great division. Um, it's a good division with, with competitive teams, good teams. Um, but, you know, I, I look at, at, uh, at the Kings roster and, like I said, from the start, uh, my dream is to win a Stanley Cup. And, and I think this team is, has everything uh, that you could, you could need to win a Cup. And I think that's, that was the number one priority for me. And I'm really excited to, to just get going to work and to start preseason and, and the season. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Austin Stanovich. Hey, Pierre-Luca, thank you for being here. 
uh, for maybe if Kings fans that didn't get a chance to watch a lot of Winnipeg game last year, maybe aren't super familiar with uh, your game. What would you kind of maybe a scouting report on your game? What can you bring to the team? Yeah, I, I think I'm somebody that uh, that could do a bit of everything on the ice. Um, I'm a centerman that that likes to help his defenseman on breakouts and forwards, and likes to help on the rush and zone. Um, you know, I I really try to to play that 200 foot game and and uh, and you know pass the puck, shoot the puck. Um, and I think it's uh, to be the complete player I, I want to become. It takes time, and I think I'm getting closer and closer to that. And um, you know, I'm really excited to 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 get to LA and, and to get to learn from everybody, but. Um, you know, I try to bring that mix of everything on the ice every night and being a competitor, um, you know, being competitive in, in front of our net, in front of their net. Uh, you know, that's that's really the, the type of player that I think I, I am and I'm trying to become more and more every game. Awesome. And uh, Tom McClellan's talked a lot about kind of a secondary leadership group in L.A. after guys like Andre Kopitar and Drew Doughty. There's guys like Adrian Kempe and guys around your age. Do you feel like you kind of fit into that? secondary leadership group, someone who can kind of help players like Quentin Byfield, Art Cali, the really young guys on the team grow? And how do you think you can grow into that role? In that way? Yeah, I, I think uh, whenever you talk about leadership, it's something that that uh, I think with time develops naturally. And I'm really excited to, to just get there um, and meet everybody, uh, talk to everybody, get to know um, get to know everybody on and off the ice. And uh, like I said, I think it, those things just happen naturally. I, I'm very fortunate. I got to learn from from a lot of great players, a lot of great people um, that that have helped me throughout my my career, and yeah, I think uh, at some point it's your time to to turn into that. And and I'm 25, uh, so I, I feel like I'm I have I'm still a young guy, but I feel like I, I've also I also have experience. So I think uh, I have a good mix. And like I said, it's uh, I think it's something that has to that has to happen naturally, and it's not necessarily something that you uh, that you search for, you look for. It's just it uh, just happens with time. Thanks, Pierre, Luke, and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Andrew Knoll. Yeah, hi, Pierre. Welcome to Los Angeles. And uh, Thank you. a couple quick ones, if I may. Uh, first one, I wanted to ask you about uh, Phil Deneau. Obviously, when you guys had the unconventional alignment in 2021, you played them quite a bit. Uh, what, what did you learn about him as a, as a competitor and as an opponent? And what are you looking forward to about him as a teammate? Yeah, it's funny, Phil. Uh, I, uh, I haven't been around Phil as a person a lot, but I feel like every time I've, I've seen him, um, whether it's in a, a, at an arena or an event or, or anything like that, I feel like it's. Uh, uh, I feel like it's a long. It's a friend I haven't seen in a long time. So, I, uh, everything I've heard about him, he's a great person, a great teammate, uh, a great leader, and um, as a player, I, I think he's one of the most underrated players in the NHL. One of the most underrated um, two-way centers in the NHL, and. He's uh, he's extremely hard to play against, so I'm I'm happy I won't be ha won't be having to play against him anymore. Um, and I'm really excited to get to, to get to, to know him better, get to learn um, about him on the ice, get to see well, you know how he sees the game and, and everything. And um, you know I, I see a, a good uh, a good friendship and a good uh, uh, teammate uh, that I'm excited to to get to know. And for you now, you've had two contracts, two stints coming to the end of them. You know, end up parting ways uh, kind of a mutual thing but obviously your, your desire to uh what attracted you to make such a long commitment to the kings and is it kind of a weight off your shoulders to know that foreseeably you're going to be in one place for a long time now yeah yeah it's, it's definitely a weight uh, off your shoulders i mean everybody's different um but i think the stability is, is something that that feels good um but now it's it's also in my mind it's you know it's gets i'm ready to get to work um eight years is a long time and you know, the, the dream and the objective is, is obviously to win a Stanley Cup, but, you know, you, you don't want to win just one. You, you want to win uh, you want to win a couple. And um, I think that, you know, the, the effort and, and the sacrifices you make in year one that can pay off in year eight. Um, you never know when you're going to win. But uh, I think if you set yourself up every year, you have a good opportunity to. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm just really excited to, to get there and. And to know that uh, this is where I'll be uh, for for the eight years, and I'm just uh, I'm just really thrilled right now. Thanks. Best of luck settling in. Thank you, Lee Hamilton. Hey, uh, congratulations on coming to the West Coast. Uh, I've got a Thank kind you. of a philosophical question for you. Um, what's it like to be an impending free agent? What's it like to be in the media market type coverage of what Canada 
does with all the players, the glare of the spotlight. And was there any consideration about going home to Quebec, to Montreal? And is that a, is it a, that a different challenge too? Yeah, I think as a, you know, as, as a free agent, I think when all the stories are coming out and everything and uh, you're just sitting there and you can't say much and, you know, there's, there's people saying, you know, he wants this, he wants that. He said this, he said that. But in reality, nothing really has changed or nothing's really happened. Um, it's it's a good learning experience. I think it, you know, I think it's hard also for the family and the friends around you that that see this stuff. Like, you know, my, like my mom reading stories and stuff that she asked me if, if it's true or, or anything like that. I mean, um, we live in a day where with, with the media and with Wi-Fi or sorry, the Internet, um, you know, uh, well, the word spreads fast and even if it's not true it spreads fast so to, to sit here the, the past couple months and and just wait for for this exact moment um you know at times was I was getting I was getting excited for this uh, moment to happen but I knew that if I stayed patient um it'd be worth it and you know there's there's a lot of options on the table at, at um you know at the beginning but I I always just wanted to be somewhere where I could win a Stanley Cup and where I felt like it was a good fit and where I felt wanted. And as soon as that moment, uh, as soon as I found out that moment was L.A., there was no doubt in my mind that this is the right decision to make. And to follow up quickly, have you ever been surrounded by such firepower as what the Kings have on the ice in terms of goal scorers? I mean, got five snipers, if you will, and good defensive players. Has that ever been, happened before? Yeah, it's it's a great team and and uh, it's not a fun team to play against. So uh, you know, to be able to join them and and be on the other side of it and to play with uh, with all those players, it's it's uh, it's something I'm really looking forward to. Um, you know, right now it's it it kind of still feels surreal. Um, everything that's going on right now, but um, I'm sure once once I get to LA and get to meet everybody and get to skate with everybody, it, it'll hit me at. Uh, It'll hit me that, um, you know, this team is, is something I think that we can do something special. And I think that's the goal every year. But um, I'm really looking forward for step one of meeting everybody. Peter, thank you very much. Thank you. We have time for one more in English. Then we're going to switch to French. Uh, Zach Dooley. Hey, Pierre-Luc. Uh, first off, just welcome to L.A. and congrats thank on you. the contract. Um, you. you were teammates with uh, Vladislav Gavrikov a few years ago in Columbus. Uh, just wanted to ask you about your relationship with Gavi. Um, excitement to be playing with him again. And if you do have any other existing relationships with with guys who are on the Kings right now. Yeah, Gavi, uh, he texted me a, about a week ago when um, there was news that I, I, I might be coming here. And uh, I, I, I called him on FaceTime and we, and we talked a bit and you know, the, he loves it. Uh, he loves it in LA and, and that's what he told me. So, um, you know, that, that helped uh, a lot in, in making the, the decision and, and be uh, being reassured of it. But yeah, he was a great player on the ice. Um, you know, I think he, he does a bit of everything out there and his presence is, is, uh, is felt not only on the ice, but in the dressing room too. He's a great person to be around. He's a great guy. Um, you know, he loves, he loves uh, talking and communicating with everybody and, I think as a teammate, uh, that's what you want. And, um, I'm really excited to get to playing with him. He, he texted me. Uh, he texted me today, and uh, yeah, I'm I'm sure. It, well, it'll be really fun to to get back with him. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, uh, we'll switch to uh, French reporters and and begin this okay. way. Um, uh, Guillaume Le Francois, Le Presse. Oui, salut Pierre-Luc. Euh, je vais allumer ma caméra. Salut. Euh, donc, écoute, ben, je voulais savoir tout d'abord, tu, tu, tu l'as évoqué en anglais un petit peu, qu'il y avait beaucoup de choses qui se disaient là, sur, sur les, réseaux, les réseaux sociaux, tout ça. Euh, il y a des choses aussi, par contre, qui ont, qui ont été dites de façon plus officielle. J'aimerais juste que tu décrives, toi, ta, ton, ton niveau d'intérêt, si on veut, euh, ou, ou, ou d'intrigue de te joindre aux Canadiens à travers euh, ce, ce, ce processus-là. Ce processus oui, mais ben, ben pour nous, au début, euh, dès qu'on a, qu a parlé à Winnipeg, euh, des intentions euh, de ne pas, de pas nécessairement vouloir signer là, euh, il y avait une couple d'équipes qui, qui m'intéressaient. Euh, bon, après ça, il y a toujours euh, la masse salariale, euh, l'échange, de, de pouvoir faire l'échange, ces affaires-là qui, qui embarquent dans le portrait. Euh, le Canadien, tu sais, je pense que tout le monde le sait, c'est une équipe qui, qui m'intéressait. Euh, c'est une équipe à qui on avait parlé un, un, un peu, mais euh, pour moi, moi, je voulais. En bout de ligne, je me disais comment, tu sais, à un moment tu dis comment je vais prendre la décision. Um, pour moi, je l'allais à l'équipe où, où ce qui me voulait le plus, um, c'est ce sentiment-là que j'ai eu avec, avec les Kings. Donc, euh, 
dès que c'est le sentiment que j'ai eu avec eux, dès que, dès que j'ai su euh, un, un peu c'est quoi leurs intentions, leurs plans et tout ça, um, pour moi, ça a été un choix, un choix assez facile. Um, on, on a parlé à, à Montréal et tout, mais euh, les Kings, depuis le, de, depuis le début de, qu'on a commencé à se parler, j'avais vraiment un, un bon feeling et, et tout. Fait que ça, a été, euh, ça a été une décision... Euh, euh, une décision pour moi que je, je pense que j'ai pris la bonne. Parfait. Euh, puis euh, sinon, tu sais, c'est ça, tu évoquais aussi les, ce qui circulait sur les réseaux sociaux, puis à, à quel point il y a des, des histoires qui s'enflammaient des fois. En même temps, il y a des photos de toi qui ont circulé, puis que tu avais quand même l'air d'assumer là, les photos avec David Savard et Cole Caulfield, tout ça. Euh, est-ce que tu te doutais que ça allait créer ce que, ce que ça a créé quand, quand ces photos-là sont, mis, sont mises à circuler? Puis est-ce que c'était, c'était, c'était tout à fait voulu de ta part là, de, 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 de marcher comme ça à Montréal? Là? Non, non. Euh, pour, pour celle de Cole, euh, euh, j'étais au Grand Prix avec, euh, avec CA, avec Pat euh, qui était là. Tu avais Zigris aussi en photo, Jack Hughes aussi en photo. Cole, au début, voulait prendre une photo de juste moi. Euh, puis du coup, j'ai rencontré l'été passé. Et, euh, je pense que vous savez à quel point, euh, comment qu'il est. c'est une, une personne qui est très drôle, un très bon sens du mot. Il voulait prendre une photo de juste moi. J'ai dit, Cole, je pense pas que c'est la meilleure idée. Um, j'ai pris une photo de tout le monde. Après ça, pour David, David, c'est, c'est comme un frère pour moi. Um, on est allé au match avec toute la famille, avec sa famille, ses enfants. C'est un, c'est un cadeau que, que je voulais leur faire à ses enfants parce que son petit gars, c'est un gros fan de soccer. Fait que um, tout ça, juste fait, c'est comme, je savais un peu qu'est-ce que ça allait faire, mais en même temps, je, les deux situations, il faut quand même que je vis ma vie aussi. Il faut quand même que, que je veux quand même euh, passer des moments avec euh, des moments spéciaux avec David et sa famille. Puis je savais que la photo allait probablement sortir, mais probablement grand-chose que je pouvais faire. Um, c'est sûr que, bon, le monde, ils se sont fait des possibilités. Puis à ce moment-là, il y avait toujours des possibilités que, que c'était à Montréal. Um, mais mais tu sais, j'essayais pas de, de créer de controverses ou, ou peu importe avec ça. Parfait. Merci beaucoup. Félicitations pour le, le contrat. Merci. William Tremblay, RDS. Salut Pierre-Luc. Euh, bon, on savait que tu ne voulais pas ressigner avec les Jets, mais c'est, c'est quoi qui a, qui a fait que ça n'a pas marché avec l'organisation à Winnipeg? C'est quoi qui t'a poussé à peut-être demander un échange pour, pour partir de Winnipeg? Oui, bien, j'ai, j'ai passé trois belles années à Winnipeg. Euh, j'ai, j'ai, j'ai zéro chose euh, en mal de dire à propos de l'organisation, des joueurs, de l'équipe, peu importe. Moi, c'était plus, euh, je voyais une opportunité de, de, de me joindre à une équipe comme les Kings de Los Angeles que, que pour moi, c'est, euh, c'est une opportunité incroyable euh, d'accomplir mon rêve de gagner la Coupe Stanley. Um, c'est, c'est pas nécessairement quelque chose que Winnipeg a, a, a pas fait ou aurait pu faire de mieux. C'est, c'est juste plus, euh, um, je pense que j'étais prêt pour, pour quelque chose de nouveau. Et le, l'occasion de me joindre aux Kings, euh, c'était, c'était une occasion, une trop belle occasion pour moi de, de dire non. C'est bon. Puis euh, bon, là, maintenant, tu es changé aux Kings, tu as signé un contrat de 8 ans. Tu en as parlé un peu en anglais, mais ça doit faire du bien d'avoir de la stabilité et de savoir que tu vas rester 8 ans. À au même endroit. Oui, ouais, je pense que tout le monde est différent. Tous, tous les joueurs de hockey, on est différents. Um, mais, mais pour moi, la stabilité, c'est sûr qu'un jour, c'est quelque chose que je recherchais. Maintenant, de, de pouvoir l'avoir, um, c'est comme un point enlevé des épaules, mais en même temps, pour moi, c'est la job vient juste de commencer. Um, je pense qu'il y a des sacrifices, des efforts que tu peux faire à, à l'année 1 qui, qui vont peut-être mener à une coupe de à, à l'année 6. Um, c'est, c'est une opportunité de, de vraiment créer quelque chose de spécial. Um, quand c'est des contrats de un ou deux ans, tu ne tu, tu penses, tu penses pas trop au futur, tu penses vraiment au moment présent. Je pense que c'est comme ça que tu peux vivre. Mais, mais là, le, l'occasion de pouvoir travailler um, pour une longue durée avec ces équipes-là, avec les mêmes joueurs, avec euh, la même organisation, je pense que c'est quelque chose que tous les joueurs recherchent à un moment dans leur carrière. Super, merci, merci beaucoup Pierre-Luc et bonne chance avec merci. les Kings. Merci. Kevin Dubé. Ouais. Salut, euh, salut Pierre-Luc. Euh, tu parlais de, de, de stabilité juste avant. C'est, c'est, c'est la deuxième fois euh, que, que, que tu as demandé à être échangé d'une organisation. Est-ce que les Kings t'en ont parlé? Est-ce que tu as eu à t'expliquer? Puis, euh, puis ça a été quoi les, les discussions par rapport à ça dans, dans la négociation de, de, de contrat? Non, il n'y a, a pas eu de discussion à propos de ça. Euh, 
T'sais, par rapport à Columbus, c'est un échange par rapport à Winnipeg. Si j'avais pas de contrat, il fallait que je signe un nouveau contrat pour jouer l'année. Nous, on voulait, être, on voulait être honnête avec eux et, euh, et leur dire c'était quoi mes, mes intentions. Mes intentions, c'était si j'avais à, à re-signer un contrat, c'était de, d'aller en agent libre l'année prochaine. Donc, euh, on a juste voulu être honnête avec eux. Les Kings, euh, depuis, euh, depuis que l'échange a, a, a été fait, euh, je n'ai pas, j'ai pas, j'ai pas débarqué mon téléphone. On, on a énormément parlé. Um, mais euh, non, ce, ce sujet-là n'est jamais venu parce que euh, moi, je suis très content de, de pouvoir me joindre huit ans à, à cette organisation que j'entends que les bonnes choses, um, qu'il y a une équipe, je pense, très spéciale avec, avec des super de bons joueurs qui peuvent, euh, qui peuvent aussi m'aider à, à, à m'améliorer. Je peux apprendre d'eux. Mais euh, le sujet de, des échanges d'affaires, c'est c'est jamais vraiment amené ce sujet. Parfait, parfait, merci. Merci.